Today on In the Woodyard, we're talking about my nine favorite things that I have in the woodyard that I use all the time that have made me successful in my firewood business. And I've got nine things, and I'm not saying you got to have them all, but these are nine that I came up with that I really like and I would have a hard time working without them right now. Um, they're all things that anybody can get and use, so I recommend giving it a try. Number one is my N&N &N galvanized dump trailer. I use this thing all the time. Now originally I had a different trailer. It was a quality steel trailer. It was a 6x10. This trailer happens to be a 6x12. It's got three foot sides. I can get four face cords thrown in or a full cord and one third thrown in loosely. Right here you're seeing a full cord being dumped and uh, I use this thing all the time. I got galvanized because I didn't want another rusty trailer. I wanted something that I could spend money on and it would retain its value. I use this trailer almost every day. Whether we're delivering wood or processing wood, it get, gets used a lot. This load right here is a four face cord load, so a full cord and one third and uh, I use this thing all the time. It was worth every penny. Matter of fact, I want to get another one. Um, I bought this about two years ago and I bought it from Thumb Trailers in Sandusky, Michigan. Excellent guys. I recommend giving them a call. If you're interested, if you're sick and tired of a rusty trailer, this is what you want. They're actually manufactured in Canada and uh, if you live in the rust belt like we do, you want something that is going to stand up and uh, be able to last more than a few years. My first trailer was totally rusted out in about four or five years. Um, I sold it and the guy that bought it um, reconditioned it and now it looks pretty again. He repainted it. Um, but this galvanized trailer, yes, it did cost me a little bit more, but I really like it. It uh, is a fantastic trailer. It's got a lot of unique features, and uh, I would buy another one in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even consider buying a trailer that is not galvanized. Maybe aluminum, but definitely not one that is just painted with um, powder coating. The powder coating they put on most of the trailers, they kind of just wave it over the top of it. And unless you keep your trailer... Um, off the roads in the winter time or if you keep it in a shed covered all the time and you don't really use it then yeah you could get a steel trailer that's uh, powder coated but if you want one that's going to last get a powder coated trailer and i highly recommend the n and n trailer um, they make a lot of different models and i have one uh, tony has one uh, a buddy of mine bought one that has a wood yard it's close by, and uh, there's been a lot of people that have gone to thumb trailers to buy them, so highly recommend them. Very good. The next item is my truck. I have a Toyota Trundra. It is nine years old. I have 240,000 miles on it. I bought it brand new, and it is by far, by far, the best truck I've ever owned. I've had two Chevys. And I've had two Fords. And I know all you Dodge guys are saying you should try a Dodge. Well, sorry, not going to do that. Um, this Tundra has been just awesome. I wish they made a three-quarter ton Tundra. I would buy it. I uh, would love to have a three-quarter ton truck. And a lot of guys tell me that I need to get a three-quarter ton truck. Well, it's more of a want than a need. I would love to have one. But it's just not necessary. It does everything I need it to do. I use it to do videos on the tailgate all the time. I use it for deliveries all the time. I use it for hauling wood. I use it for my other business. I use it for hunting. I use it for going trapping. I use it for fishing. I use it all the time. Um, it has a six and a half foot box. Um, I have the tires on there are the BF Goodrich KO2s, Ben, just an awesome truck. I pull my tractor with it in the dump trailer. She's got a little squat going there. Um, but yeah, it's been just awesome. Yeah, three-quarter ton would be nice, 
but I have no complaints at all with my Tundra. It's been just an awesome, awesome truck. The next thing is bigger chainsaws. Years ago, my brother Kenny told me, get rid of the little weenie saw you got and get a real chainsaw. I had a 55cc chainsaw and he told me, you need to get something that's bigger, like a 70cc saw. And the first time I ran a 70cc saw, my eyes were opened. For those of you that think, oh, your 40cc or your 50cc saw is enough, yeah, it, it's enough. But if you really want to cut fast, get a big saw. If you want to cut easier and faster, produce more wood, get a bigger saw. They are just awesome, and I highly recommend <clears throat> getting a 70 or 80 or 90 cc saw. One of each would be ideal. Um, they just cut so much faster. It is not even close. If you talk to any logger that does any hand cutting, they will tell you 70 cc saw is about the ideal size. It will cut pretty much anything. I run 24 inch bars on all my saws, and not all my saws, but most of them, and uh, they cut fantastic. Uh, that's what I would highly, highly recommend. Getting a bigger saw, you won't regret it. I use them all the time. I have, uh, right now I have two 572s. I have a 592. Um, I have a 3120, which is ridiculously big. Um, I've got a little saw that's a 540. Bert's got a 395. My brother Ken has a bunch of 372s and a 395. There's the big boy right there. That's the 3120. Yes, I have a five foot bar on it. Why? Because I can. It's just fun to cut with. It's just cool. We've used it a few times for different jobs, uh, but most of the time, like I said, I use the 24 inch bars. Uh, right now you're seeing two uh, 592s cutting. The reason we use those is you can rip so easily with it. A lot of people say, oh, you got to get a log lift on your splitter. No, you don't. If you get rounds you really can't lift, just rip them. If you get a big saw, it's so easy to rip them in half so you can get them to a manageable size. The bigger saw is the way to go. It's just so much better. You, you got to have a big saw. And the amount of wood you can cut, so much faster than a small saw. A, a 50C saw is like, bare minimum, 60 is better, 70 is ideal, 90 is awesome. So if you're a steel guy, a 492, a 500, or a 661. If you're a Husqvarna guy, a 572, a 592. Saws in a bigger size are so nice. They have so much power that you can cut so much faster. It's just not even close. It's, it's not, even, not even funny. Um, the first time I ran a 70cc saw, I had been cutting a tree up with my brother and he had a brand new 576 and I had a little 455 ranch or 55cc and he had a 70 and I was limbing and by the time I got the limbing done he had the whole tree cut up and so I then I, on the next tree we cut down I ran that saw. The 70 cc one it was like oh my god i gotta get one and i have never regretted it since then so that's my favorite size saw is a 70 cc saw it'll cut pretty much anything plenty big and uh really like them a lot so yeah they just work good for for ripping the next thing is a faster log splitter i have a easton made ultra um, i researched for a long time and i almost bought a kinetic splitter um, but they just don't have the power to punch through some of the bigger rounds and uh, That's why I really wanted to get a hydraulic splitter when I found the ultra that had a four second cycle time And for the cost of what it was it was like a no-brainer And the only regret that I have is that I didn't do it sooner. I had two small splitters That were box door splitters one I, 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 I named the the glacier because it was so slow it had like a 17 second cycle time or 16 second I don't know it was just slow and I didn't even know any different because I wasn't looking for production but once I got uh, to where I was producing more I needed to produce more wood than I could because of time I thought well I got to get a better splitter and what a game changer uh, whether you get a uh, 
a big professional splitter or one that's a smaller one like this uh, Ultra that I have here. Um, it, you can produce so much wood, so much faster. With my old glacier, I was producing no more than about a face quarter, or a third of a quarter an hour. That's about all it would do. I had a single wedge. The cycle time, like I said, was like 16 or 17 seconds. Um, and I produced a lot of wood with it. And I was working a lot of nights till, in the wintertime, I'd work after dark. I'd, I'd go out after my regular business was done with my regular job at say five o'clock and it's dark already and I would split wood till nine o'clock a lot of nights so about four hours and uh, I would do that all winter long to get wood done because it took that much time and when I got my ultra the first few times I ran it my eyes were open unbelievably fast and whether you get uh, a splitter that's made by someone else or you get one from Easton made get a fast splitter time is everything. I can produce by myself a full cord every hour, easily. And if I got help, we can do a cord and a third, almost a cord and a half of split firewood with it. I've got a single wedge and a four-way, and it just has been awesome. It's been just an awesome splitter. People ask me all the time, if you had to get a replacement, what would you get? I would get another Easton Made Ultra. I absolutely love it. I can move it around. It does everything I want it to do. So there you go. The next thing is I would recommend, and I do this, buy logs. I used to go and cut in woods, and I would uh, go on buddy's land, my dad's land, my brother's land, people that wanted to get rid of trees. I would go and cut wood and haul it and you know lift the rounds and throw them in the trailer and bring them back and then split them. And I figured out my time. And uh, by buying logs, even though I'm paying for the logs, I can make per hour twice as much money twice as much money and I've figured it out many times it's cheaper more productive more dollars per hour buying logs no question about it it's it's just it's simple math is all it is when I go on a property and cut if I'm getting free wood and I gotta go and I gotta cut it and then load it into the trailer and bring it back and split it I can make about $25 to $30 an hour. That's about the best you can do. And that's getting free wood. And that's of having to haul it, you know, a relatively small distance, a little longer distance maybe. You're going to make a little bit less money. Pay for your gas, wear and tear in your truck, wear and tear in your body, your other equipment. By buying logs, you're hiring them to go into the woods and cut timber to the size that you want, the kind you want, when you want it, they bring it to you, and all you gotta do is cut it down, split it, and then dry it, however you dry it. It's so much more profitable. By buying logs, like I do, now I make minimum $45 an hour to as much as $55 an hour. The next thing is my tractor. Love the tractor, I should have bought one long before I did. I use it all the time for pulling um, the trailer around the wood yard. Obviously we use it for moving logs all the time. Um, the tractor has been a real game changer and we use it for a lot of different things. It's one of my most fun things to do is be in the tractor just like a lot of you. Um, the, the use that I get out of this thing is absolutely incredible. Um, I've had it now about two years, two and a half years got about 450 hours on it. Uh, it's a 45 horsepower tractor. We use it for loading the processor. Um, I use it for, like I said, pulling the trailer around. We use it for plowing. Um, I use it for um, cleaning up the wood yard. We use it for pulling the splitter around sometimes. And like I said, we've gone on logging jobs with it. Use it all the time. The next thing that ties right in is the grapple. The Frostbite Grapple has been an absolute game changer, and I absolutely love using the Grapple. It's my favorite um, attachment that I have. I mean, a bucket is nice. Yes, I've used forks, they're okay. But the Grapple, if you're making wood, and if you're picking up logs like you're seeing here, the Grapple's the way to go, no question about it. I have a lot of guys say, oh, 
I can do the same thing with forks. No, you can't. You can't go in there and just pick them up like that. You can't. I always tell people, the difference between forks and a grapple is it forks if you put your hand flat with your fingers all together and you put your top of your hand on a table and you slide it towards something and try to pick it up without using your thumb, just your flat hand. And not curving your hand, just the flat hand. Versus turning your hand with your palm down with your thumb extended from your other fingers and grabbing it and picking it up. There's a reason God invented the opposable thumb. It's the greatest invention ever. Without the opposable thumb, we wouldn't be much as far as a species. You can do so much by having two opposite forces going against each other. And a grapple is a big, giant hand. And you can pick up just about anything, or whatever your limits of your tractor are. And I use it for pulling trees. I use it for picking up brush and pushing it. I use it for breaking up piles uh, in the log pile when they're stuck together or if stuff freezes together. I use it for moving logs that we've already split in the trailer by eating it up. Uh, pulling logs like you see right here. Loading the splitter. Loading the processor. Picking up tree service wood. We've taken this to several jobs and used it. And uh, once you use uh, the forks, that's a game changer. But then you make the next step and you go to the grapple. Unbelievable. You couldn't do that with forks. You can't grab a bunch of stuff. You can do onesies, twosies, and if you've got uneven territory, if you're on terrain that's, you know, bumpy, you're, the logs are falling off. They just do. A grapple, you grab it, you pick it up, you put it where you want it. It is awesome. I absolutely love the grapple. Um, worth every penny. It's a frostbite. Uh, I have one. My buddy Tony bought one. And I think we paid somewhere around 17, 1800. I think now they're over 2,000 for the grapple. And you got to have the third function on the tractor, which I had added. The third function is worth every penny, about a thousand bucks. So, the next thing is the elevator. Now I didn't buy this. This kind of came with the farm when I moved there. Um, Bert had it, and he first had it. And he told me, "Yeah, why don't you use the elevator?" I'm like, "Well, I really don't need it. I can just chuck the wood into the trailer. I can." throw it into the bin i can put it in my truck but the elevator game changer huge um absolutely huge i think bert paid somewhere around a thousand dollars for this all in i think you know maybe the elevator was seven eight hundred and then the motor and then they put the jacks on it but I, it saves so much work you just let the wood fall and it takes it away to heaven to wood heaven wood mountain whatever you want to call it uh, it works fantastic. This is a Loyal um, elevator made in Loyal, Wisconsin. Um, I don't know if they make them anymore, but it's just an old small bale elevator for moving hay up into a barn. That's all it is. Uh, I don't even know how big it is. I think it's a 30 foot or something like that. But an elevator is a game changer. It is so nice. It saves so much work. Uh, my shoulders absolutely love the elevator and uh, if this one dies I will buy another one matter of fact wouldn't even be bad to have another one maybe I'll start looking uh, it's just great um, so that's one of the greatest things that uh, I've ever used is the elevator um, Bert talked to me into it he says you got to use this thing so we started using it now I use it all the time now I don't even want to split wood unless I get the elevator we run it with a power pack I used to use the uh, Generator, gas generator, but now I've got power packs that can run it, uh, and it does just fine. So, the elevator, cool thing. Got to get one. If you don't have one, get one. You'd be glad you did. The next item, the grand finale, the Easton made 22 MB processor. Now, I did not buy this. Uh, about two years ago, Andrew called me up. It was the morning of my mom's funeral, and he had texted me, and he said, are you interested in the processor? I'm thinking, well, yeah, I'm interested. And I thought maybe he's trying to talk me into buying one. He said, no, I want you to do videos with one. So it took about six months or so for them to get this one put together and get it to me. But it is a 22 MB. It's a manual bar is what that stands for. And 22 inches is as big as the wood that it will take. 
and uh, it has made my life much easier. Um, I used to cut everything in a pile with a chainsaw, and now this thing, it's you sit in a chair and you run some levers. Easton Made makes great products. There's a lot of other companies to do too, but um, I had never run a processor before I got this one. Figured it out kind of the hard way, just trial and error, and I learned a lot. And now that I know what I know, um, it, it, it's unbelievable how much time and how much more productive we are with the processor. Um, everybody wants to see it and uh, play with it, and it is fun. Now, there are circle saws that are really nice, too, but the bar saw works fantastic. You just have to use a little bar oil and... It's pretty speedy, as you can see. This is just real time you're seeing here. It's got the feed trough where it comes in, and uh, you uh, set your plunger there, and uh, the tip table kind of tray kind of holds it, and you just run the ram through. I think this is a 40-ton splitter. Uh, it's got a 115-horse Kubota on it. Um, works fantastic. The, uh, the, the splitter... Um, the whole thing all together on the frame that it's on, I believe it weighs like around 17,000 pounds, something like that, um, so which is nice that Bert has his one-ton truck. He can pull it, no problem. But it's really fun to run. Once you learn how, when I first got this thing, I had no idea what I was doing. But I figured it out, and we're getting a little faster with it now. You learn, We're learning how to kind of sort the wood a little bit and which ones to run and how to how to push them through and how to do two or three functions at once. And until you've run one, you really don't know. So a lot of you guys are saying, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Well, you need to try it. Um, it's a lot harder than it looks, I can tell you that, because you've got nine levers there and they all do three, four different things. And you have to be able to not look at the levers and know what they're doing, uh, watch your wedge height, watch your tip trail, watch your log, how it's coming in, watch the length of it, the clamp, the bar, the saw. The ram, you got to watch the elevator, you got to watch the uh, live deck and the feed feed tray as it comes in. You got lots to look at while you're doing it. And when you're running the processor, um, you can do it alone. You can fill the live deck and then run a load of logs and then load it again. I've done it quite a few times. But two people is really nice because one guy can be loading and managing uh, the wood that's in the trailer, moving the trailers out because you can fill a trailer in less than an hour. It's, you can easily do probably almost two full cords an hour if you have good sized wood. Um, the size of the wood is everything and the quality of the wood. If you've got good straight logs, you can just fly. Uh, there's a lot of people that think, oh yeah, you should be able to run that thing faster than you do. Well, you can, but you want to do a good job too, so you got to kind of watch what you're doing. Similar sized logs make a big difference. The quality of the logs as far as straight is a big difference and then obviously having the wood easily accessible you don't want to have it too far away you want to be able to load it quick but running the processor is an absolute blast just like the grapple and they kind of come together because uh, when Andrew got a hold of me back a couple of years ago he said you're gonna need a tractor or a skid steer and he was right <laughs> there's no way you could do this without a, a tractor for loading on a skid steer you got to have a way to get the logs up on there. But there is a lot to see and it's a noisy machine and a lot goes on when you're uh, running logs here. So what we like to do is load the live deck and then put, put a bunch of logs in front of the live deck so that um, you can pick them up and throw them on there quick as it gets uh, emptied out. And when you're running, running the machine alone, you wanna have everything kind of pre-staged and ready to go. But yeah, it's, it's just a lot of fun to run. If you've never run one or never watched one being run, it's quite, quite the operation. And uh, it is mobile. We can, we can take it pretty much anywhere, um, but it's not something that you like to tow because it is so big. We kind of just have it stationary. We've got it on the cement slab there. I think the slab is, if I remember right, it's like 60 by 100 or something like that. It might be a little bigger which is the ideal place to have it because you can kind of clean up really good underneath it because there's a lot of sawdust and bark and debris that falls. Um, the wedges are uh, adjustable up and down. I do have a four-way, a six-way, an eight-way, and a 12-way. But we have found by trying all of them that eight-way is the sweet spot. It just works for almost everything. 
But you can see how fast you can go. I think Bert's running it right here. He's, he's a really good operator with everything. Graham up on a farm and being a machinist, he knows what he's doing. He, uh, he taught me a lot, and we figured a lot of things out together just by running the processor and running machinery. And he knows how hydraulics work way better than I do, and it's been a real, real good, uh, oh, he's got a doinger coming. Nope, he didn't get it to fall. <laughs> it fell down through. Um, but by shooting the log out like that and having it go through when you try to hit the center of the wedge and bringing another one in right away, uh, it's just a lot of fun to work this thing. And you can see how fast he's going there. While one log is being split, the other one's being ran in. See how that works? And then the elevator, of course, lifts everything up into the, uh, the trailers. And uh, then we can move the trailers out. And if we have to do resplits, we can do them. But, but a lot of people will process right into one big giant pile. But our wood yard is just set up differently in that. We take the wood to the bins to get rid of it and then kind of keep the processor in a centralized location and have the wood, um, when it comes in in the trucks, we try to have it loaded up close by so it's easy to access. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a real fun machine uh, to run. If you ever get a chance, do it. They're very impressive, I can tell you that. Um, so yeah, we got the basket right there for the cookies and there you can see the trailer where everything drops into the trailer and we just pull it yet another thing we use the tractor for we push the tra the trailer back and forth uh, so that we can get it fully loaded usually three three movements will get it fully loaded um, and then the, uh, the tractor and the elevator and the grapple and the pile of wood all together there works really nice and uh, Gavin can uh, drop a load in there now so sometimes we drop them in one at a time, sometimes you can drop two or three, but usually one at a time. So that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Come on back tomorrow. I have another video for you at 5.30 a.m. Right now, go watch some of the other videos on my channel. There's 1,300 waiting for you right now. Good night, Irene.